Pastor Michelle Bogue Trost and pastor here at Central United Methodist Church, and I'm glad to welcome you to worship at this time. Whether you're here in person or watching on the live stream or watching next week on television, we are so glad that you have joined us for this time and place, this peaceful moment, this sacred time together. It is a cold and frosty day out there. I'm think I was telling the 8.30 service folks that I was thinking about the Advent carol that talks about frosty wind made moan. And uh, that's a day like today. However, the sun is beautiful and it's warm and wonderful inside this building and all these gathered hearts wherever we are. You are welcome at any point to join any service here either on the live stream or in person. We are still holding in-person services with protocols in place for safety. 8.30 in the morning, we have a small service that includes Holy Communion each week, and 11 o'clock is this live plus live stream format. We are doing everything we can to observe protocols up front in leadership and also in the pews. So if you are here in person, please remember to keep your mask up, nose, mouth, and chin. Um, at all times, and to find the brown pad in your pew where you can leave your contact information um, legibly, please, legibly, so that we have that in case we need to use it. We have had to use it once this year, and hopefully we won't again, but it is also a way to um, help make sure we have current addresses and, and such like. So please help us out by doing that. Marie King is here with me to lead worship this morning. Dick James will be reading scripture. Sean Stafford and Denise Johnson are here to lead, lead in worship with their wonderful gifts of music today. And that incredible tech team back there, persistent and consistent and altogether wonderful, making all of this happen over the live stream. Uh, Nate and Megan and Mark and Christopher are back there helping all of this happen. Laurel and Ben O'Connor are hosting our chat and bringing forward comments as they need to. You will be invited, whether here or online, to offer your thoughts and prayer requests if you like. And so we are here, gathered in this time and place to worship together, even if we are apart, six feet in the room and separated by distance all over the country. We are not the scattered church. We are the church deployed, and that's an important difference. But we come here and now to worship, to build our strength for the week ahead, to offer ourselves to God. Let us begin our worship with prayer as Marie leads us. The words should be on your screen. God of our devotion, you are the one constant in life. Open us this day to see the things that hold us in their grip so that we might shed unnecessary distractions that keep us from seeing your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for being our rock, holding our lives together in the ways that matter most. Amen.
me. Sorry, Christopher. Our children's time this morning comes to you via video with Sarah Maroney. Hi friends, it's me, Sarah. Didn't that feel awkward and uncomfortable? That was 30 seconds of silence. This month, we are focusing on things that we can build up about ourselves instead of tear down. You have heard Laurel talk about movement and prayer this month, but this week we are going to talk about silence. We always want to fill our days with the talk and movement and thoughts, but we need to make time to be still, to reflect, to be with God. Being silent is something that we can be better at. I am not a very quiet person. I'm a talker. For an introvert, I tend to talk a lot. I'm not one for the quiet. I always have a million thoughts in my head and trying to get those thoughts quiet for very long is quite difficult and it isn't something that comes naturally to me. Silence, meditation, or prayer, it sometimes feels awkward. I have things to do. I must stay busy. How do we learn? to still our minds, calm our inner voices, and become more receptive to the voice and experience of God. Something that we do, sometimes in church, is silent prayer. We sit in silence, we quiet our thoughts, and we try to make ourselves present to God to allow him to speak as we listen. But I still can't shut my mind off all the time. I will sit in my room with my door closed and try to picture Sky Lake in my head. I start to picture the lakeside tryst at Sky Lake in my mind, but suddenly a voice pops in my head. You have things to do. Or there's a knock at the door. Mom, mom, mom. All this is reminding me that I have things to do, like cook dinner. Taco Tuesday. What's today? Taco Tuesday. Is it Taco Tuesday? Mm. Yay. It's not easy to turn the world off. However, I figured out some tips because we are thinking differently this year. God created us and we are good already. The first thing we need to remember is that our brains might never go silent and that's okay. We need to learn to sit and focus on our breathing and just be. Think about your feelings and focus on what is around you, the sights and the sounds. Talk to God. Give yourself the time and space to be still. Allow yourself to be who you are and be open to God's presence. So I'm silent and I'm listening and I'm open to God's presence. And if I listen hard enough, I'm going to hear God's voice, right? I usually just hear my own thoughts. So I talk to God about them now. It's how I figure things out. Am I talking to myself and figuring it out on my own? I remember that God is at work within me. And that is tip number two. God works through us. We are good. Lastly, another tip I have for you is that posture and place matter. If I go lay on my bed and I try to quiet my mind, I'll probably fall asleep. And that's okay, but it's important to find a place where you can clear your mind from distractions. I am still looking for my perfect space. I am still practicing being silent. I'm learning to find quiet space 
within my heart and make room in my busy brain to be silent, be still, reflect, and be with God. Dear God, may there be within this day quiet moments when I can rest in your presence, sit for a while at your feet, be still, and simply listen. Amen. Dick James is reading scripture for us this morning. Thank you, Sarah, for a wonderful introduction to silence. Verses 5 through 12, using the Lucan Psalter translation. In God alone my soul finds rest, for my deliverance comes from God, who alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress. I will never be shaken. Only in God, my deliverance, my glory, my refuge is God. Trust in God always, my people. Pour out your hearts before God, our refuge. Humankind is but a breath. Mortals are just an illusion. Put them on the scales and the balance is thrown off. They weigh less than a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put false hopes in stolen goods. Do not set your heart on riches even when they increase. For God has said only one thing. Twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, Adonai. You repay all people according to their deeds. A short excerpt of, this is a short excerpt of one much longer psalm, but... I think it's trying to do in these short verses several things. First, written in a time when the Hebrew faith claimed one God while all the cultures around them worshipped multiple gods, the point, one of the points of this psalm seems to be making the case for God as the one and only, the one God. It also talks about um, our need for God and our dependence on God at least through the psalmist's eyes and words. And it also names the fact that we sometimes set our hearts on other things besides God as the end goal, as the, the end of life. And I think it speaks to us now as much as it might have spoken to those for whom the psalmist was writing. We can count on the steadfast presence of God. We've talked about that these last weeks. We know that God has the world around us and God's got us. But the question comes out of this psalm, are we as steadfastly present for God as God is for us? Once upon a time, Olivia Newton-John sang a song, and it was endlessly on the radio for a time, called Hopelessly Devoted. Anybody remember Hopelessly Devoted? It was part of the soundtrack for the movie Grease. And friends, I did look it up, and I was appalled by the release date, 1978. How can Grease have been 42 years ago? I don't, I don't know. But that's not my point. The song, back to the song, Hopelessly Devoted, was about unfailing love, even when the beloved has left us and the world has fallen apart because of it. Yes, it's a pop song. It's not uh, high, high poetry or high literature, but hopeless devotion. It's a worthy thing to talk about. It's what we've seen in the Psalms the last couple of weeks as the psalmist sings of God's extravagant and hopeless devotion to us. But it does ask us, can, can we truly say that we are as devoted to God in return. Jesus would teach about the intensely focused pursuit of God. 
He would quote often the Hebrew scriptures as he called people into the life of loving God with all their heart and soul and mind and strength. And it wasn't just words. We see that life in him. We see that devotion in everything he did. We see that complete commitment to the relationship with God. And we see that that is his connection with the divine. It's a relationship so intertwined that it's hard to tell where human and divine are separated. And Jesus would not just live this life, but would also tell those around him and us as well that this isn't impossible. This kind of living is not impossible. It's not even unusual for us. This is how we're meant to be. It is possible to be in this kind of relationship with God. It is possible and it is necessary. And I think there are moments when we all glimpse the possibility. Moments of spiritual high where we absolutely get that we can be close to God. We can feel our connection to the divine. Most of us have had at least one mountaintop moment in our lives at some point. Or if not something we could describe that way, at least a, a glimpse of something larger and deeper than ourselves. Something more powerful, something beyond us. But then that moment, that high mountaintop moment ends, that glimpse disappears. Real life intrudes. Often other things get in the way. It's exactly what Sarah was talking about in her children's time. We may not want that to happen, but inevitably it seems to. And the possibility that we've gotten a glimpse of not only fades into the background, but it fades far enough away that we barely remember that we've seen it. We get blinded by the immediate and we forget the infinite. So how do we refocus? How do we turn that around? The psalmist says, In God alone my soul finds rest, for my deliverance comes from God, who alone is my rock, my salvation, my fortress. I will never be shaken, only in God my deliverance, my glory, my refuge is God. So how do we get there? How do we stay there? How do we get to the point that we could sing such a song with all our hearts and soul and mind and strength? As Sarah said, it takes deliberate, intentional faith and action. I follow a little comic put out by a group called Radio Free Babylon. If you've never heard of them, they're awesome. It's called Coffee with Jesus. There's a steady group of people shown having coffee with Jesus and discussing meaningful things together. It's a little four-panel comic. Sometimes they are seeking answers to the great questions. Sometimes they need help with smaller things. Jesus usually ends up pointing out that they already know the answers. <laughs> but they're just not doing what they know they should or what he's already told them to do. It's pithy and wise and arresting sometimes when Jesus or one of the regulars cuts to a truth that cuts to the heart. I think most of us need to refocus our understanding of God as a beginning. If we see God as the scorekeeper or as the uh, the, the wrath flinger. If we see God as a scapegoat for everything going wrong in our lives, or if we spend our time continually asking God why this has happened and how come and please change it, it's very hard to shift from that into an intimate relationship with God because you're on opposite sides of some great divide there. Or if we... If we see God only as emergency backup when things are a mess and we're at the end of our rope, but we forget to pay attention otherwise, we're not going to move very easily into a relationship with God. The key word there is relationship. 
So many times we want to make our interaction with God transactional. I am good, God, so you reward me. I am bad, God, so you punish me, though I'd rather you didn't. If you do this for me, God, I will do this. Right? If you just do this, I will do this forever. Who hasn't made those kinds of bargains? God is silent, so I walk away, as if we could really punish God that way. I pray for this, I get it. I don't pray for this, I don't get it. I pray for this the wrong way, I don't get it. You know, it's a transaction. We see God as a party in transaction. The thing is, God is relational, not transactional. It's not supposed to be quid pro quo kind of thing. It's about steadfast love. It's about hopeless devotion. Divine and human connection that's impossible to unravel. So if we can wrap our heart and soul and mind and strength around that, and that can be hard, for those raised with the scorekeeping God, for example, if we can wrap ourselves around the idea that relationship with God is actually possible, then we move into needing to grow that relationship. Now, I think if most people were asked to name what are, what's the key to any great relationship, most would say trust, right, and communication. Agree? Trust and communication, keys to the great relationship. You hear it in the psalm. The psalm singer goes to say, trust in God always, my people. Pour out your hearts before God, our refuge. Trust and communication. Even 3,000 years ago when this was written. And the key to that in relationship with God is well, several parts. You probably knew I was going to say prayer, and that is one piece. But I think before we even get to growing in our prayer life, we have to let go of some things. We have to unclench around the things we're holding so tightly to that we don't have room for God. The things we're holding so tightly and so closely that we can't even clear a space for anything else. The psalmist talks about that. Put not your trust in riches. Put not your trust in stolen things. Put your trust only in God. A second component is prayer. Sarah did such a wonderful job. I had no idea what she was doing for children's time today. And here, it's, it's amazing how God works. But you probably knew I was going to talk about prayer. I talk about prayer a lot. Paul tells his churches throughout the New Testament letters to them to pray without ceasing. It's, it's, the, it's the, the mode by which we identify ourselves as in relationship with God. And people always ask how to do what Paul says. It's a question I've had through 25 years of ministry. How am I supposed to do that, pray without ceasing? I mean, I have other things to do in a day, right? Taco Tuesday, laundry. <laughs> We're busy people with lots of legitimate concerns and many burdens on our time and on our minds and on our hearts, and so how are we supposed to pray without ceasing? That's just one more thing. How am I supposed to add that? Well, St. Basil the Great, one of the early church fathers, not quite 3,000 years ago, of course, early in the church tradition, says this. This is how you pray continually. Not by offering prayer in words, but by joining yourself to God through your whole way of life so that your life becomes one continuous and uninterrupted prayer. Words sometimes get in the way. When we can look at prayer that way, it becomes relationship. Relationship becomes prayer. If we're, just, if we're used to prayer just being a, a means of conducting transactions with God or with parking lot angels or whoever you happen to be praying to in a given moment, 
if that's what we see prayer as, we have a hard time making the leap of to prayer as relationship. But prayer at its heart is not needs and wants list making. It's, it's not a vehicle for approval seeking from God. If I get the right words, if I pray the right prayer, God will love me more. Prayer isn't even life coaching. Words are just the surface of prayer. When I was training to become a spiritual director, one of the most valuable things I learned was to help people accept silence. I first had to learn to accept it myself. I'm an extrovert, and you may well understand that silence is not my first language. (laughs) I'm a talker. But this is not an understanding of silence as an absence of God or silence as an unwillingness of God to speak or silence as a space to fill, but silence as a space for relationship to grow. Silence as a space for our hearts to reach out to God and to meet God in sacred time and space. And words can completely get in the way of that. Part of accepting the silence and learning to is trust. Trust that God is present. That poem we talked about that we had an anthem about the first Sunday of Advent has that line in it, I believe in God even when God is silent. It's trusting that God is there. It's trusting that God is here. And that takes practice. Silence, as Sarah said, can can feel silly sometimes. Waiting and listening or falling asleep or letting your mind wander into all sorts of other busyness. But trust and communication and living into relationship with God, with all our heart and soul and mind and strength, is, is precisely how we can express our hopeless devotion to the one who is hopelessly devoted to us. My prayer for each of us is that we seek God first and last and always. And that we begin to sit in the silence, that we begin to sit in the relationship, that we begin to love God back as much as God loves us. And to make that the highest priority. And when we can get there, even for a moment at a time, we find that all the rest, all the rest is detail. That relationship sustains us and carries us through everything else. From that relationship comes life. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Before we enter into our time of prayer, as Denise and Sean lead us with music, we invite you to offer your prayer request to the live stream chat. If you don't have a request, if you'd like to name where you've seen God at work in your world this week, that would be wonderful. As we listen to the music, that will give you time. Be mindful as you are adding prayers to the live stream that that we may not announce them all. You You are lifting those prayers as you type. Um, and they are there. They are out for the community to see. Denise, will you lead us? Slay 
Slaves are we whene'er we share That devotion anywhere God of love and God of power Thou hast called us for this hour God of love and God of power Make us worthy of this hour Offering As we come into this time of prayer, we bring the names from our weekly prayer program. In the hospitals or recovering at home are Pat Devine, Richard Blackwell, and Mel Livingston. Me, can I just add, um, Mel, is, Mel is at home with his daughter, Cindy, in hospice care at this point. So if you know the family, even if you don't know his family, um, send a card offer a call, but he is at his daughter's house. Okay, do we know her address? Let's send him a card. Uh, they can contact the office. Okay. In our prayer program, we have, that we do every week, we have Mary Abley, Amber Brown, Sharon DeMaria, Ellen Guess, Marge Johns, Sarah Maroney, John Petrish and Ken Summers. And we have some family and friends who need prayers this week. Ray Frederick, Tyler and Maggie Walford. Do we know how they're doing? On the mend. Um, Tyler, okay. Maggie's almost, almost back to normal. Um, Tyler is getting there very slowly, but progressing. As is Martina. Oh. And Martina is on our prayer in our prayers, and Bonnie Harvey and Lisa Richards. Bonnie Harvey uh, was in the hospital for a couple of days oh. uh, last week and then um, was exposed to an active COVID case and so still sort of working through that. She's quarantined at home, which is hard. So prayers for her and Dave as they weather that. And Lisa Richards, um, who along with Ray Frederick, they're both receiving treatments for medical issues. So our prayers are with, with you both. We have some on the live stream. Uh, some thanks. Carl Molnar is thankful for 50 years with his wife, June. Oh, happy anniversary. Yes, happy anniversary. Amy Clock has a birthday this Wednesday. Prayers for Mary Abley's family who are dealing with her tragic passing. Not, not, not Mary's tragic Not Mary's. <laughs> a relative. Her cousin. Yeah. I'm sorry, missed that. <laughs> Didn't Ooh. mean to scare everybody. Uh, and let's see, prayers for all those who are seeking God's love. And I saw another one here somewhere. Well, it's all right. So as we come into this time of prayer, I'm wondering where you all have seen God at work this week. Here in the sanctuary, you'll have a moment as we pray to offer your prayers, the same as folks have been doing on the live stream. But where have you seen God at work in your world this week? Pam. So she is celebrating an inauguration and a peaceful transfer of power in, in our country, as we are, yeah. Yeah, Martha. So Martha is celebrating a high school bassoonist who is recovering very slowly from a very bad car accident, it sounds like, but is making progress and demonstrable progress at this point. So celebrating that. All Good right. Shepherd Village is getting the vaccine on Monday. That's wonderful. Yeah. What a, what a system that has been. <laughs> 
others. Denise is still celebrating a brand new grandbaby. Cora Louise made her entrance two weeks ago and uh, is just beautiful. I saw pictures. She has pictures. That's a big surprise, but she's beautiful. So, um, so we celebrate with your whole family that, that, new announce, that new arrival. So for our prayer today, and this may feel awkward on the live stream in particular, but um, we're going to start with silence and stay in silence for a few minutes. And, and, well, what may feel like a few minutes, what may for some of you feel like a flash and not long enough, may feel like too long for some of you. So I invite you into silence, presence with God as God is present with you. Let us pray together. holy and living and ever-present God. A minute of silence can feel oh, crushing for some, liberating for others. But we live in a busy world, a busy and noisy world. A world of things and people and situations and events and voices that would separate us from you, that claim our attention, that distract us from the meaningful. Yet you come to us waiting, waiting for us to listen, waiting for us to distance ourselves from the distractions, waiting for us to let you in. And so in this minute of silence, in these moments of peace, in the presence of the sacred, we offer ourselves to you. Teach us again what it means to be in relationship with others and with you. Remind us that relationship isn't It's not about transactions and contracts. It's about love and devotion. Help us to cherish our relationship with you. This prayer we live in, may it become our lives May this moment of silence become the starting place for renewed dedication on our part. We've come to you this morning with, with everything that we are. We don't just leave parts of us at the door as we enter for worship. We are who we are as we are. And we know, we trust, we hope that you see us and love us anyway. Through it all. We come also burdened by worry and fear for others. On many of our hearts, 
This week is our nation and where we go from here and how we live into our future. On many of our hearts is this pandemic that surfaced a year ago here. Those who have lost family members to it, those who are living with the effects of it, those who are still finding out that they're susceptible to it. We pray for each one. We also pray for so many we keep in our hearts, family and friends, neighbors. So in this silence, in this peace, hear us as we lift their names to you as we speak them aloud. You know each life, you know each need, you know each hope. And we trust, we trust in you to touch each one with your comfort and your strength. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ. We ask it as we pray the prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The pandemic has pushed us to expose new ways of offering our gifts to God, new ways that will likely continue once we can be together again. Please consider how you will continue your offerings and pledges to the work of the church. If you would like to support the ministries of Central Online, you may donate on the website or call the office to sign up for a direct deposit or use the Gift Plus app. If you are here in person, you may have noticed the offering basket in the center aisle. That is there to receive your offering as you depart from worship today. If you have brought an offering, feel free to hold it in your hands or lift it up as we offer a blessing for these gifts to God's purpose. We thank you, God, for your steadfast love and mercy on us. And we believe your promise that you will bless us when we are obedient to your word. And so without hesitation, we gladly give to you what is yours. Bless these tithes and offerings, Father. We love you. Amen. We would love it if you would share the, the, this link and your experience of the live stream on your social media networks. Also, watch the website and your email for updates and information. If you're not on our email list, you can sign up by calling the office. Maureen would be happy to talk with you. Or filling out the form on the website. If you are on Facebook, remember to follow Central's page. Tomorrow night, our book study continues as we finish up Walter Brueggemann's Virus as a Summons to Faith. That's at 7.30 every Monday night. And next week, we're starting a new book. It's called The Great Emergence by Phyllis Tickle. And <laughs> I think you'll... Marie giggles every time I say her name. <laughs> if you want to make Marie giggle, tell her Phyllis Tickle's name. Anyway, every, every Monday night at 7.30 on Zoom, and that information's in your weekly email. And our soul care offerings continue every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. That is a time of devotion and fellowship and nurture and care and all sorts of fun things go on there. So I hope you'll try that. Our Hope at Central small group uh, meets this Thursday again on Zoom at 7.30. Also at 10 a.m. every Sunday, I hope you've been there because there's been some amazing stuff happening there, is our adult education and fellowship time. It's live and Zoom, so you can be in the dining room if you like or join on Zoom and um, the schedule, the upcoming schedule for that is in the bulletin as well. Um, we have 
we are experiencing the voices of missionaries and mission fields across the world in that in January and February we'll move into a new theme. So I hope you will join in with that. Also, go ahead, Marie. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say we're hosting a Red Cross blood drive. Yes. On Saturday, February 6th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. There's an urgent need for blood donations, and while we can't serve a hot breakfast, we do offer bagel. Can't even talk today. We do offer bagels or pastries. Pre-drive reservations are required by going to the Red Cross website and search for the blood drive at Central, and the link is in your bulletin. Also, the new flower charts now available in the Welcome Center. Please contact Carla Wood if you have any questions, and her phone number is also in the bulletin. If you'd like to sponsor altar flowers each week, usually these are given in honor or memory of someone. If you would like to do that and you can't get in to fill out the flower chart, just give Maureen a, in, the call, in the office a call, um, and we will make sure that you can sponsor flowers for a particular week or a particular person if you like. And our Shepherd's Supper still continues. It's takeout only. But I understand we're still getting quite a few people. Yeah, we are. So there are so many ways to connect with ministry and program here at Central, uh, even through these times. So I hope you will check that out and uh, join in and express your faith, live out your faith in one way or another this coming week. But as you go into this week, into this world, into this cold, frosty morning, may you go knowing that you are the beloved of God. God is hopelessly devoted to you. <laughs> May all that you do in this week ahead reflect your devotion to God. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs>